Kilpailussa mukana Ramirent. Kotikatsomo eväät tarjoaa kotipizza. What's up everyone and welcome to the round two back nine here on the fourth stop of the Prodigy Disc Pro Tour. We are in the beautiful Kuopio, Finland and this coverage is brought to you by Natural Born Disc Offer. Thank you for sharing the coverage with us here at Gatekeeper Media. And this commentary is brought to you by Parked Podcast. My name is Mitch Phillips. Joining me is my good friend Hayden Ricard. Talk me through the front nine. Front nine was pretty clean all the way up till seven. Yep. That's where the tides changed and Evelina lost three strokes. Yeah. Actually, even four. Mm-hmm. And Henna is on the charge. She's played clean. It's going to come down to these last couple holes. And yep. then not far behind is Arpanen. I mean, yep. she's at plus two. Not far. She's been playing pretty clean besides seven as well. But she's, I mean, she's able to do this. Yeah, there's like 10 through 14 or so. We're going to have a lot of these, you know, Less than 300 foot shots, yes, going but are in, going to be into the woods, yeah, out of the woods, technical. But let's jump into hole 10, Aiden. Yeah, par three, 351 feet downhill. It's a little bit off to the right, so it takes out the backhand just slightly. But we have seen players go with it. The more common throw is going to be the forehand over the edge towards the OB and landing and pushing close to the basket. And it's 351, so. It's just a little bit out of range, so you're probably going to lay up just inside circle one or just outside. Yeah, and it's not necessarily out of range as in like the distance, but it's out of range to really attack because of the speed here. It's got to sit soft. Yep. And this has got to get down quick. And it does. Yep. Just you outside. Really, yeah, you really get a view off these drives of how beautiful this property is here oh with the gosh, river in the background here at Colpio. I mean, it's absolutely Gorgeous. Looks like you hung a painting behind the basket. I mean, stunning. Backhand putter here, I believe, for Henna. Overstable approach disc. Straightforward kick. Skip. Mm, got Skip. caught up. Yeah. I was thinking it was going to get a skip off that top mound there. Yeah. And just it's a little more height. Glide all the way down. Overstable approach disc. Tactic out of Escalinen. I like this play over stable, just trying to lay on that right side. And like you said, hope for a skip. I Evelyn. like this play. Yeah, she has this Firebird dialed. Hey, just push the edge of those woods, come back. Oh, and hey, no. going long is and out of bounds. Oh. Gosh, it's rare to see that. It's just maybe not pushing it far enough. But usually that forehand decides to kind of have a tester settle. coming back for par. Yeah. It kind of allows Hannah to be able to lay up and know she probably has to get in a stroke here. Yep. And even if, you know, Evelina was in perfect position, you're not running that. Heck no. Just outside circle. Sit. Sit down. Okay, it does curl up, but going to be losing another one. Every time you hear metal on this on these holes, it's like, okay, sit. Yep. And everybody falling suit of mm -hmm. just laying up, not worth taking the bogey, or worse. That was a, that was a pretty good run there from Escalina. Uh, okay. Thankfully hitting the, the sponsor square. Good thing it was there. No way. High This is left. double bogey. And we're on a tie game. This is that moment where we're really going to see this. We've how, seen this yeah, before, though. Evelina's going to need to just use this frustration to fuel her fire to really get back on it. I mean, going bogey-free through 24 holes this she, tournament, and now, I mean, completely turned. Yeah. And if she can just play clean, catch a couple birdies... But it's really going to come down to that. Last, bird. She just needs pars. Yeah, with that, yeah. But it's going to come down to the this round and the next to see if she can push for the win. Yep. Let's move into hole eleven as we go straight into the woods downhill, two hundred seventy nine feet par three. A lot of movement is going to be happening in this left to right shape. See some forehands even, but really stand up. 
stand still, putter, just being able to hyzer flip and just control that speed as you kind of navigate down. But hitting any of these trees pretty close to the basket tends to kick you straight down. We do see some pretty mean kick out, spit outs. This basket tends to lean a little bit. So really just trying to put it close and not have to worry about it. Needs to turn. It's such a brutal hole. It's a brutal I mean, hole because you've been out in the open for so long. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, hey, throw 279 feet dead straight downhill with a seven, eight foot gap at the end of it. I mean, it's... Yeah, it's, just throw it straight. Yeah, just throw it straight. It's, it's not hard. Easiest shot in disc golf. Throw it straight, man. Just needs to get back left. It's a forward kick. Should be pin high, but not a lot of view of the basket. Escalina and going back to this baseline link. Early. Loud kick off that tree. See if she can scramble to get it close. And here's her chance, Evelina, to make a difference on this yeah, one. Get one back. It looked like it was trying to turn, but just a little bit too much hyzer. So going to be a lot of scrambles from our card here. Mm -hmm. You can see the difficulty here from Escalene. And I mean, this is an Anheuser hitting the gap. High Anheuser, or is she going inside? So we going inside. Both, actually, high Anheuser and inside. This looks great. She's going to have a downhill putt, looking at the basket, but I mean... That's a great ask. Mm -hmm. And not a problem. A little uh, long. Yeah, the problem's going to be coming back. Her forehand with that putter is phenomenal. Yeah, she really needs to start leaning on it because the backhand's really kind of biting her. Is this, ooh, that was tracking for sure from Carpenter and from distance. Pick up another one. Take the lead for the first time in the tournament. Nope. Not having it. I mean, that's a good, good, just almost chess move here. I mean, Evelina still has a good amount of distance coming back. And there's a lot of holes, and you're tied up. Great par putt from Escalina. And the footing. You saw she, she almost rolled her ankle there. Yeah. We're going to see that come into play a lot. This back nine is how many roots and rocks. Another great par putt. Hope to see this continue with Evelina at the bottom of this hill. There you go. Get some confidence back in you. Be able to do that. It's going to be all pars here so far. It's a tough hole. I mean, this hole's playing 3.2. Yeah. So just barely over. But not many birdies. I mean, no, how many? I mean, I think there's only two in the two rounds. Yeah. So we go to hole 12, par 4, 725, and pushing for the birdie is an option for this one. I want to push as far as you can, hyzer flip over the right side, and just fade left, giving you a good look at the green here. I mean, there's OB, it comes tighter and tighter all the way around the green. We saw some big throws on the first round. Yeah, we saw Maya Leitinen almost put it within she was the only a birdie. 200 feet. Well, I mean, yeah. Her and Henna were the yep. only birdies. The mistake here, like you said, is going to be able to push too far right or maybe even hyzer up and push too far left. But really, if you can just have good footing, be able to approach it from about the 250 foot mark, you're going to be happy with it. This looks really good, too. More of a spike angle, trying to limit that skip. A little bit shorter than most of the drives you kind of want to see here, but... Spike hyzer into the green? Yeah. Or not spike hyzer, but a soft spike hyzer. Yeah, Hannah definitely not trying to be shorter here. She's getting all of this oh, one. No. She's got to watch how much turn she puts on this one, though. Yep. Maybe need a little more turn.
Just a bit. If she had more turn, I think she's hitting that gap. Yeah. She's going to be inside the woods. Maybe on the edge, hopefully. It's actually, it can be really good if this comes it back towards comes. the end. It's going to be OB. Oh, just all, I mean, if that had two more feet of height, it was going to stay in bounds. She's going to come back pretty far, though. Overstable out of Evelina. This should be quite a distance far down the hill. Huge shot there. And getting the roll. Mm-hmm. This is a tough approach into the green. Hopefully she can play it soft and over. It's The distance is deceiving sometimes. Yeah, as you can see, you're pushing left here. Oh. Going OB again. May, I, I, I think that's out of bounds. We don't see another graphic there, but the way those stakes are showing there, I would we assume it is. We don't see a graphic? There was no graphic, so we'll wait and see. She comes back up. This one needs to get over. Does it get Four the roll, roll in? It, it gets does. the roll in. That is awesome. You can hear Cell right in the background. <laughs> Fist pumping knowing she, she put it close. Should be a routine upshot. Going for it. Almost. And that settles in a good range there. Going to be a birdie. Finally get to Henna's drive. See how deep she is in the woods. She looks like she's on the edge there. But still, I mean, yeah, step out and forehand into this green is kind of scary. Honor. This needs to turn. Good shot. Just showing she really does have all the shots in her bag. I mean, that's from a knee overstable approach disc, forehand, nose up, with OB on the right. I mean, that, that really is green. so many things to be going through your mind. She's able to block it out and able to put it close, still with a look for birdie. Circle's edge here for Escalina. I thought that was in. So much basket. You hear the frustration and just confusion. Fortunate double bogey. That Good playing clean so far. I mean, ugh. It's unfortunate. She goes for her mini. She thought it was in. I know. Just dropped uh, it at the last second. And that's what these slightly angled greens will do to you. You'll short some putts. You'll put not enough behind it. And this is the good side to be on, Evelina, for birdie. Good comeback. Correcting. Getting a birdie. She's plus, through, plus two through the round. Putting another one on Henna. Let's see if Henna can match. Ooh, great hold by the basket. We said it time and time again throughout this tour. If Hannah can get the putter going inside the circle, she's unstoppable. She has just a little bit more touch and sometimes a little bit more distance than Evelina, but Evelina tends to excel on the putting, the putting lane. lane. And yeah. we've seen that kind of lacking so far, which is why they're tied. And I think well, that and alone, I mean, that's why she, Evelina's been able to take that advantage because she's so much more consistent with her putter right and she's not having to worry about that hers just getting close and being able to put her in that range of like you know everybody says hey this is where i'm comfortable i have no problem making this right and this is a these couple holes 13 14 15 where you're going to need to feel confident yes. off the trees off just staying away from them off of the tee hitting these gaps and then putting not really becoming an issue but being able to just put it close these holes is this a little bit inside she did in round one can she sneak all the way up again skip, a little skip. she does She'll be outside. Yeah, just, just outside. It, just, just inside. inside. Yeah, yeah, just inside, I believe. But this is where we're tied. I mean, we're going to see match play, matching each other's through. shots. And this is it's exciting golf. I mean, tied to the lead. A little bit right. If this gets clean through. And it does. And sits behind the tree. That's going to be a step out. But, I mean, you can see the distance. It's not that far. No, and she's confident with a straddle putt when she needs it. It doesn't change her stroke very much, no. being that she is more of a spin putter, kind of coming down to the waistline and being able to just kind of swing through. So she should be all right. And hitting early is... Thankfully, carpenting. thankfully catching that 
a little bit of branch there to yeah, not let it not kick, kick very far. It yeah. kind of hooked it. That and is the worry: is kicking left or right far. And Escaline and matching, just getting a little bit further, but taking a kick to the right. And you can see the difficulty here, not even really knowing, I mean, visually not really able to see the basket. I think she was wanting it to flip up just a little bit there and miss that last tree. Yeah. Too much hyzer. And I mean, her footing and the way she was angled, it's you're going to go you're gonna, uphill. You're going to release hyzer. Yeah. It's hard not to release hyzer. That's what I should have said. I think that kick helped her a little bit. Yeah, she turned that over just a bit too much. But, I mean, this is... these. I mean, we're at 276 feet. It's a very short hole. But you can see how difficult these can be if you're just a little bit off as this finally gets very close to the basket for bogey. Still back to Escalina and missing this Missed. tree. Good. Oof. And Hannah and Evelina from similar distances. You're just oh, hitting no. high, and I think coming up, you know, you're going uphill. Maybe she had the height wrong. Yep. That straddle, knowing she needs to put a little bit more behind it without that back foot and weight shift. More on an even plane as Henna, and she takes a lead. The first time in the tournament, Henna has the lead. Two birdies in a row, 12 and 13. And Carpenter taking the bogey there. And Escalina as well. as well. I mean, shows the brutality off the tee, what it can do, bogey or worse. Yeah, these, get these, lucky hole, these holes are the birdies. Line, They're birdies or bogeys. It, it's, we've said it before, true lines. Yep. That's what it is. If you hit the true line or get lucky, you're there. Yep. And you just got to make the putt. So we go to hole 14, par 3, 249. Another tough one. Seen some flex forehands, putters, turnover putter, trying to get it close. We've even seen some, some go long and kick to the right and have a tester coming back uphill. Yeah, that's where the forehand usually ends up, or if you hit early. I mean, these approaches get really difficult if you don't make it through the initial gap. Giving it the right height, letting it work left to right is the play here. This needs to, oh, just a little bit too straight. I think he was it. turning at the last minute. Yep. Kind of opening the door here for Evelina. She's going back in as well. This looks good if it stays clean. And similar putt. She yeah. have an uphill st step out straddle putt. Yeah, and that's I mean sometimes that's good. And she knows that she did wrong in the last one. She needs to, it. it was good speed, just a little bit too much height. So hoping to correct and. Maybe bring this back to a tie. Carpenter in here with the mid range. Ooh, if this stays clean, it's on the backside. Might have been a good tree. It really wasn't coming back. She's going to be outside the circle. Fairway driver here for Selena. I kind of like this play if it's more controlled. Ah, uh, catches a root. She tends to you're have probably, that kind of You're probably going to have more movement on that disc than you yeah. would a putter. Especially going the lower line. She has that more left to right mm -hmm. movement with her natural stroke and being able to use that ground play. But it, unfortunately, she catches. And so we go to Henna here with a pretty awkward stance. Trying to navigate these trees on the green. Great shot. Upshot was fantastic. Going to make Evelina work for it. Almost had it just needed a little bit more turn on that at the right height. Mid circle two here for Carpenter. And it holds the top end. Yep, Koti Pizza slow mo here from Yeni Carpenter. 
huge putt mid-circle two from her high right, putting it home, running it down. Good momentum to finish out here. That's got to feel good. Yep. Brings her back to even on the round. There's the correction Tying from Evelina. It up. It's Evelina. And you can see the distance. I mean, it's been so consistent, this battle here. I mean, there's four strokes between first, second, down to third. I mean, and that's only going to grow unless we can see some players really start to attack. This course can bring in some birdies, as you can see, but that distance between first and second and third, I mean, it's not far off. Yep, moving into hole 15, a par 3, 226 feet. A hole that brought some difficulty for our card in round one. A very distinctive right-to-left hyzer, but so short in which if you're not close to the basket, you have to lay up. I mean, it drops off incredibly on the backside, but this needs to be kind of a high shot pushed too far, and you find a lot of kicks. This one does, and it's, it's a very touchy, demanding hyzer shot where you control the height and the speed. I don't think you could do a intro better than that to this this hole Thank because you. I appreciate I mean, that I really do. That is, I mean, it's <laughs> it's hole. It this hole is hard. Yeah, it's, it's it's the shortest hole on the course, but it's so technical. This looks good if it can hook up. Give a skip. Yes, there you go. And even then, if you're not confident in that putt, downhill. Yeah, she's she's in a range where it should be pretty. I mean, good after what she in, just made. Yeah, she's feeling it. And Hannah needs to put this one close. Give a little competition because Evelina got an early kick. Oh, it's such a good shot. Just you think that's close enough? I think it is. We're gonna hope so. But <laughs> that, that's what you want to do. Is I mean, it, it was a great height in which she had the nose up to where it didn't have enough speed to hit the backside, and it, it was just. Absolutely perfect as this one's going to do the same. Catching that edge, rolling forwards, and three of our players in a spot to attack. I think this is the best we've seen this whole play from yep, them definitely. so far. Yeah, Evelina just playing quick. I mean, there's no way you're running that. I mean, how fast I mean, that you just runs saw how off. fast it just got there. Mm hmm. One of the fastest screens on the course here at Colpio. Now this is a tester. Her putt's been really confident so far. Oh, but holds on just a little bit, and you can see immediately 40 feet. Uphill, too. Mm -hmm. Another Good putt. And it, it, that's a hard putt to make when you're at a similar distance after watching one of your card mates just push it long. I mean, it's it's a pretty routine spot, but when you watch someone do that, it gets in your head of like, oh, I could do that too. We go to the comebacker here from Escalinen. Just leaving it a little bit too nosed up, not flat. And that's hole 15, birdie to bogey, like that. I feel like that's every hole here. <laughs> True. You're not wrong. These greens, just so much movement as and a hit. tap in, taking back the lead. I love going back and forth. We've seen it. I mean, this is the fourth tournament here at the Prodigy. It's, it's going back and forth at every one of them. It's I been swear. amazing. And I know we talk about them not and not to shame any other the other players. It's just these are so consistent. It's so much fun to watch them compete. I mean, it's compared to America over here. It's like Ricky and Paul. Yeah. Ricky and Eagle. Yeah, it's coming down to the wire here. Hole 16. Yeah. Par 3, 361 feet uphill. Plays more of 380 to 390-ish. And you're going to want to push the far right side, hyzer flip up and get close inside circle or just outside. Yeah, I think you described it well as what looks to be a pretty straight shot. It really needs to be a left to right moving shot to be able to carry up the hill so and still have the stability. Yeah. Hopefully she had good footing over there. And you know Hannah's going to try to bomb this one up the hill like she did last time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she has the power to climb this hill. It really comes down to disc selection and the angle that it releases. This 
this works right. And even then, I mean, it's a full it's so pull. It's hard. just so far uphill. Similar spot. A little bit straighter of a line, but... Man. You can't, the height is... You gotta have the height, but also you don't want too much height because then you're gonna push that disc plane to the left and it's gonna fade out early. This is a really good shot as well, using the whole fairway. And you mentioned uh, the battle being similar to Ricky and Paul, but I would argue, I mean, similar to Cat and Paige. It's gone on for oh, so long. No and then looking at them coming to the United States, well, you're going to see... Kristen I mean, Tatar? Yeah, you're going to see the five of them. I think in 2022, oh, we're going to well, see you have Kristen, Evelina, two. Henna, Cat, Paige. I mean, th those five are in contention every single week. And then you have all the other names I mean, yeah. that we're not even listing that... I mean, this last year was fantastic to see so many different women, so many different men win different tournaments. Yeah, and FPO not specifically, being, I mean, we had, I think it was oh seven gosh. different women win the first nine Pro Tour yes, events. Yes. So, I mean, and then you you add in these four, five, six, you know, female players come as we see a great approach here from Evelina. I mean, we're in, in for an incredible 2022, 2022 season. Going to be awesome. Yeah. Disc golf at an all-time high. You're not going to want to miss it. And being able to watch this European footage, get some, some knowledge behind some of the, the names higher up on the world rankings list, it, this is incredible. And Hanna, giving it a run there a little bit, trying to maybe sneak one in. Taking her time here. Carpet in knowing she's gotten two birdies in a row. Cleans out the par. And again, another hole. There's no birdies here on 16. Three, four, five holes on this course. Just birdie just, just out of reach. Oh, what seemed to be routine, just that Anheuser angle out of her hand just never really faded back, and it just kind of glanced across the chains. It's unfortunate. So everybody else taps out for par. So we move into the penultimate hole, 17, par three, 256 feet. Got two trees to avoid here as you work into this gap in the woods. Left to right moving shot is gonna be ideal. The tee pad just a little bit off to the left. You're gonna see some forehands working up the hill. Backhand turnover with a mid-range fairway driver. You definitely wanna be on the right side of this green where it opens up a little bit more. Not as many trees to worry, but kind of a weird gap being that these trees are offset. Hence why that turnover shot tends to hit it a little bit better. This is getting close to that height and just fading out quick. Yeah, right, right height, but just not enough power. That disc just kind of loses speed. Physics come into play, and it fades left. it through she's gonna have some distance left she's i believe she's almost pin high but that's gonna be a really tricky putt and evelina going to the backhand with a fairway driver it's a mid-range i think it's like mako yeah it might be a low mako yeah. three Staying on the edge there, just outside circle, I believe, on the left side. This is kind of a natural shot shape for Yenny. She has this kind of Anheuser shape out of her hand. But just, this might get all the way up, though. Oh, ho, ho, catching. I mean, that was best scenario going early out of her hand. Mm-hmm. This is one of the only, you know, holes of this this nature of this, you know, sub 300 foot, foot par three that we don't have mandos. So thankfully there's not a mandatory up the middle or she's coming all the way back. So yeah. putting it close. Good approach. Going to see some scrambles here. Likely to be a and lot of You can kind of see the sun maybe being in their face on this one as they approach. Uh -huh. You see the glare. Completely. 
completely blind to the basket there. Wow. Carpenter didn't happen to really just walk up maybe as we didn't see her. Know where the basket is. Yeah, I mean, you have no clue. Evelina from a little bit closer, still on this left side. This is Henna. Sorry, Henna, my bad. Putting it close. Yep. In routine par. Now we got Evelina. Now we do. They're right next to each other. This is one she can run. She's pin high, same height as the basket. This will be great to tie it up. I'll do it. Woo! Had to play with that tree. Yep. Nose up the whole way. That putter gets going, and we have a tie at the top. I mean, she was at circle's edge. Yeah. It's a great putt. That's a range she usually has a lot of confidence in. And, and through the middle of this round, she found some difficulty and was struggling. But if you take away her double bogeys, her pars, and say she gets par on um, seven, and then a couple birdies on those other ones, where do you think she sits? I mean, if she can do that next round, which is, I guess, kind of what you're trying to lean yeah, at. Yeah, yeah, I mean, she'll be, I mean, first round, she shot that four under. She's now back to even, like you said. If she can correct on a lot of these where we've seen kind of some errant, just non sell and moments. Well, a lot of it wasn't really uh, her technical fault. She had a roll away yeah, twice. Yeah, came in. So, I mean, I think she's she can push even closer to that six or seven range. I'd love to see it. Move, take us to hole 18, final hole. Final hole, round two, par four, 492 feet. Got to get out the double mando gap. Don't push too straight. Want to land center cut fairway on the right side and have a good layup to the green. And I mean, this, I can't pick, you can't pick a better 18, I don't think, with the toughness of the OB all the way around. Yeah, the and difficulty right comes. Off the tee. Right, it's, it's on the back side of it. I mean, we saw in round one all of our card have difficulty putting oh, it close. Yes. It's, it's a hard distance to judge, but I mean, this tee shot, if you can just get safe backhand, forehand, high, low, as long as you can get out and then be able to see the basket. Obviously, being further right, down the fairway, always going to be nice, but... It's hard to get, though. Yeah. And from that distance, there, I mean, there's no way you're pushing just need to get out. Hopefully... And it, it does OP. kick OB as well. That's the toughness of that double Mando getting out of that gap. Yeah, and she's had a good back nine. I, I mean, think that's the first one we've seen actually hit early here. Yeah, and most of the time the out of bag bounds kick. Right, most of the time out of bounds kind of pushes a little bit too far straight, but to kick hard left like that, it's going to be a lot of distance. And Henna again going with the backhand out the gap. She put it in a great spot in she round did. one. Why not continue? Oh, I believe she, she missed the did Mando. She miss it? I think she missed the Mando. Yeah, she did. Holding on, I believe she'll go to the drop zone there at the edge of the woods. That's rare. I believe that's the first one we've seen miss the Mando as well. It's going to give Evelina even an easier thought to approach the basket with no issue. This needs to get down. Yep. It's going to be a long shot from there. I wonder if we see Henna really go and attack and try you to throw a fairway driver. on the right side than you do left. Yeah, but but you would probably want if you have the distance, throw the forehand and skip up the right side. Yeah, you'll have a better chance of not going OB that way. I think we see her lay up. Yeah, there's no way you're running this from no. No, I mean, you still this is, gotta go. This only took maybe 50, 60 feet. Yeah, right around there. Short tee pad, kind of an awkward footing. It's nice to even have a tee pad on the drop zone. Yeah, there's no way that's getting there. Yeah, and she knows she doesn't want to go out of bounds again. Yeah, make the movement on the next round. Take your bogey and move on. Does the cameraman just keep showing us this treacherous green from out of bounds, carpeting in from quite a distance back? It looks a little bit too right. Yeah, kind of playing safe. I think that's a good play. Like you said, for, for him, I mean, same thing. Just knowing that bogey's in play, not trying to take any more strokes than that. Find that open and space. And only at plus one. Yeah. She's got solo third. For now. For Hoping now. that yes. she can put it close and walk out with just the one bogey. But, I mean, she's had a great round so far. She needs to get down. Yep. Yeah, good checkup. You hear the claps from the spectators. 
This needs to get down too. This is this will OB. happen in round one. Yep. This opens the door. What? <laughs> Everyone finding the difficulty here on eighteen. Oh my gosh. Yeah, this whole—I mean, only playing a half stroke over par, but it just the difficulty on this green is just such a scary, this, just difficult approach. Your drive on this hole is a little bit different, but I think this approach kind of reminds me of the European Championship mm -hmm. with the water tower. Yeah. Kind of that angle mm -hmm. and the OB all the way around. Yep. Very broken in putter. You can see that. Oh, my gosh. Look at the bend in it. It's not even a circle anymore, but it's still. Get over. Sit down. Oh, no. No way. Eight, That's just wrong. 18, giving these players some trouble today. Finding the out of bounds again for Carpenter. It's going to be double the triple. Uh -huh. It's very unfortunate on this hole, finishing out your round. Like, this does not feel good. Yeah, it's one you sit with heading back to the house. And just off again. I believe that will be the triple, if not the quad. Yes. Evelyn at a safe par. Good she par does it putt. again. I mean, that's pretty common. I feel like finding that par, hence we are only a half stroke over par. When you can go out of bounds close, you're still inside the circle on this green. But like you said, what a just ridiculous ending to your round. Needing to put this in. Limit the strokes lost. Good bogey. And a minus three. I mean, that's one off the hot round from round one. We'll check in with our leaderboard here in a bit. And a great, birdie. amazing birdie there. I believe that's the only birdie on the day there from Yeni Escalina. And, I mean, unfortunately sitting at plus nine, but quietly Escalina had a great round. She had some good highlight shots. I mean, similar to Carpen in there, unfortunate triple to finish it out, but still holding on to solo third. I mean, the difficulty of this course, especially this back nine, there's holes where you can have a birdie and instantly a bogey or double bogey because it's, hey, you went out of bounds once. Guess what? The out of bounds is still in play on the approach, and you go out of bounds again. Yeah, it, I mean, between first and third, you're looking at eight strokes. Mm-hmm. I mean, look at Henna's round. They just flip-flopped. Yep. Really, and but Evelina was able to capitalize on the last hole. Yep, and we see Haiti Line shooting the minus two. She's... Coming back up. Yep. She's in Jumping fourth place. On. We know she can do this. Yep. She has yeah. the distance. She had when that putter gets going. She's a really fun player to watch. I'm excited to see her final round. Also, Maya Lighton staying right there. Yeah. Middle of the Not pack. Too bad. And, and sitting she at fifth place. She can have a couple birdies and stay clean. She can push into that, that top four. Yep. And she needs it. She's charging on this she tour. Is. But be sure to check out us on Instagram at Parked Podcast. Like and subscribe here at Gatekeeper Media. My name is Mitch Phillips. And I'm Hayden Ricard. And we'll see you for the final round here in Quopio.